Okay, here we go. I hope everyone's had a good week. If you can't see this, just grab the mic and tell me. That's probably the best way. Uh, but I hope you're looking at a slide that says while you're waiting. This is a, a slide that I've had on every presentation just to kind of get everybody acclimated. Um, there's a survey that we gave to participants at the beginning of this webinar series. If you haven't taken that survey, we'd love to have your uh, information so that we can plan these um, to meet your needs. If you would like to uh, get to these slides, and I kind of recommend that you do so that you can click on things and explore them. Uh, if you type in bit.ly slash tech talk three slides into your web browser in a separate window, uh, you'll get to the slides and you can look at them. I've shared them publicly. Uh, they are also in our Google Classroom setup, and I'll explain that in a little bit if you have not gotten into our Google Classroom yet. Um, so tonight we're going to be talking about managing student work, and we're going to be exploring Google Docs, Sheets, Forms, and Drive, and we're going to kind of focus on some things that you may not already know. Uh, Google Docs seems pretty straightforward, but there's some pretty fancy things that you can do with it if you know where to look. So you may be pleasantly surprised if you're, if you're already a Google um, Apps user, you may be pleasantly surprised by some of the things that we're going to talk about tonight. We want to thank Rio uh, for and the Educators Rising program for uh, putting this together. Uh, thank you. And um, our Tech Talk series is a series that's going almost weekly between now and the end of August, covering a variety of topics uh, related to educational technology. And this series is open to anyone who wants to come to it, but it's really geared towards the students in the Ed Rising program. So please invite friends. Um, the recordings will be in our Google Classroom. People are welcome to join that. And we have a flyer that explains the program a little bit in the schedule, and you can find it at bit.ly slash tech talks with Lucy. We have a Google Classroom where everything's stored, and you can ask questions or leave comments or access any of the things that we've talked about uh, in previous uh, webinars. And if you go to classroom.com, uh, classroom.google.com, and in the upper right hand corner, you'll see a plus sign and it will say join this classroom. If you put the code in, and I'll put it up here a little bit bigger, uh, YXFLGJ7, you will get into our classroom and you'll be able to access all the things that we've talked about. Uh, last week, we talked about Chrome extensions um, that will enhance your browser. And uh, this week, we're going to be talking about some Google Apps. So everything that we, we cover in these webinars and the recordings will be in that Google Classroom. So just to kind of go over that one more time, if you go to classroom.google.com, you need to make sure that you log in with your personal Gmail address because it may not work with your school address. If you get an error or it doesn't work for you, and you, it's probably because you've used a school address, um, you need to use your personal Gmail address because it's a long story, and you just, it just won't work. So, um, so you're going to go there, you're going to click the plus sign, select join a class, and then you're going to enter this code to be part of our class. If you need help with it, um, uh, we can also go over this at the end of the webinar. So we're using Zoom right now. There is a chat uh, feature in Zoom for this webinar tool. Make sure that you add comments or uh, suggestions or any resources that you would add to this. Please put it in the chat, and um, we'll respond when we. I'll respond when I see them. And uh, make sure you might want to introduce yourself if you don't. I think all of you might know each other, but if you don't know each other, you might want to take a minute to introduce yourself in the chat so everybody knows who you are, what program you're associated with, and so on and so forth. So um, you can also, the other thing I wanted to mention about Zoom is that you can also, if you're in full screen mode, you might be able to press escape or something on your computer so that the view isn't taking up your whole screen. And that way you can switch between um, our Zoom window and another browser window if you want to try out some of the things that we're talking about tonight. So you may want to uh, play around with the Zoom a little bit and see if you can get it to work for you. But you don't have to be in the full screen mode at all uh, in order to use it. For you, those of you who don't know me, I'm a consultant who lives in Chicago, Illinois. I used to be a classroom teacher, and I've worked with teachers for many, many years uh, on professional development efforts. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Elementus, and 
Uh, once in a while, I tweet something with the hashtag EdRising at Rio. So if you find something that you want to share with our group, you can use that hashtag and we can find it um, on Twitter. If you want to know more about me, you can click on these links later on. Um, but I want to get to the good stuff and not talk about myself the whole night. Uh, we On the first night, we had um, a Padlet um, put up. Uh, where people could introduce themselves. And I want to take a minute uh, to show you what this looks like. Um, I'm going to copy and paste this. Actually, I'm going to get out of the browser here. And um, I'll put it in the chat to make it easy for you. Uh, here's the link to it. If you have not put your intro in there, you might as well at some point. Um, and this just gives me an idea of who's coming and, and what you're interested in and that sort of thing. Some of you um, have already introduced yourself, like uh, I think you know Brittany did um, last time, and uh, and I'm and I'll go back and I'll leave a comment for you, or you can leave a comment for each other here um, as we go forward. So this is just kind of a, a place for us to kind of uh, post uh, basics about ourselves. If you want to use it to post any other resources, that's fine too. Last week I was showing um, uh, an extension that allows you to share a, a resource that you find in the web into a Padlet. That's why this 50 awesome apps um, link is in the middle of everything. So that's what we used. Anyway, this is a, um, a Padlet that we use for introductions. And there's another one that I want to use tonight because last week we have, uh, we have a crowd tonight, but last week we had a, like two people at the beginning of the webinar. And so it wasn't so much fun to do an activity together. Um, so we're going to do, uh, net last week's activity tonight. So um, our icebreaker tonight is another Padlet, and Padlet lets you um, make uh, create these uh, uh, these boards and put sticky notes on them. And you, all you have to do is double click on the board, and a Padlet uh, a sticky note will pop up. Um, and all right, somebody, I, I might have put that in there already. I think I might have, uh, I was playing around and did that. But you double click and a Padlet will pop up and you can say, um, you know, a favorite resource that you like. And... What I was going to have you do was do this and uh, put the link in to your resource. So mine is Newzella. Newzella. I'm going to go find the link to my favorite resource, which this is not really my favorite resource, but I like it a lot. And um, I have 5 million favorite resources. And I'm going to put it in here. Ah, uh, you're not feeling super advanced at this point. I feel successful if I can create a PowerPoint. Okay, we can. That's great. That's fine. So do you see what um, you probably don't see your sticky note, whoever put this up here right now, um, because I created a setting in Padlet that will make me, will allow me to approve every single one of these. And the reason I did that was I was going to let you guys fill this in, and then I was going to prove all of them, and boom, you would see them. And you can use this in a classroom. Let's say you want, you don't want kids to um, be inspired by other kids' ideas, maybe in some assignment. Maybe you want them to, you know, respond to a reading, uh, a, a, you know, a text that you're reading in class, but you want them to have their own original idea. You could have them create their own sticky note, and then. Um, and have the settings so that everybody can't see their posts. And then you can approve you can approve them once everybody's done, and then they can compare their responses. That way they're not so swayed by each other and they're kind of coming up with their own thing. Um, it's just a technique I've seen used in a lot of places um, if you want to have an element of surprise in an assignment. So um, don't worry if you're if you if you're feeling like this is a little overwhelming. Uh, Padlet is a really easy tool. It doesn't require students to create an account. You have to have an account. Um, they just changed the pricing, as I mentioned last week. But you can create, I think, three of these on your own free. Um, and it's a really, really useful tool. And I like using it to 
uh, sample people, uh, people's thoughts and have them share resources and that sort of thing. Last week we talked about these things that, um, the browser I'm using is not Internet Explorer, it's not Safari, it's called Google Chrome. And Chrome is the, the browser that makes Chromebooks run. And you can customize it with these little things called extensions. And we talked about them last week and where to find them. And, um, and they, they do all sorts of little cool things. So the extension that we, I used for this Padlet was um, uh, made by Padlet. And I'll show you what it does. So if you go to, um, let me think of, a, I'll go to Edutopia because that's my go-to favorite site. So Edutopia has all sorts of great articles about best practices in education. And um, let's say I wanted to share something with people who were looking at the Padlet that we just, we just put our um, favorite tools on. Um, I can, um, let's see. How about improving student-led discussion? So this article I wanna share with you guys, and I have an extension that's installed here, and it looks like I put my mouse over it, it says post to Padlet, but Padlet's icon looks like a little origami goose or something. And I click on it, and it disappears. No, it's not supposed to disappear. There it is. And it's gonna log me into Padlet, theoretically. Come on, cooperate. It normally works really well. All my Padlets usually show up in this white box here when I click on that icon, and then I can save that article to the Padlet. It's like bookmarking it to it, but it doesn't want to cooperate tonight. And last week it was a little funky too, so I don't know what's going on. Anyway, that's just a little bit of what we covered last week. Um, there are other um, Chrome extensions that you can get to, to do certain things like take screenshots or uh, do screencasting. Um, you can see that I, ha I have lots of them in here. You might recognize this one. This is for Pinterest. Uh, so if I wanted to save this article to Pinterest, I would click on here, choose a pin to save, and then I could save this to my uh, Pinterest board. So Chrome uh, extensions, just to review, come from the Chrome Web Store. And the easiest thing to do is probably just Google it. And there's a lot of them in there, but there's an education section that you can go into and see which ones might be particularly useful to teachers. This, these extensions will make your work life more productive and efficient, and they're worth exploring. So um, take a look at our module from last week if you're interested in learning more about this. This is more of a personal productivity kind of um, thing that will help you leverage the power of Chrome uh, in your work a little bit more. So that's what we covered last week. Um, and if you have time, go into our Padlets, uh, introduce yourself on the first one, and then on the second one, uh, tell me what you like to do with, with, with what's your personal use of technology. Uh, are you a Pinterest person? Are you uh, a knitter and looking at Ravelry? Is it Ravelry.com that it's a kind of a knitting community? If there's something that you're interested in technology personally, I would love to hear about it. So. Take time um, and do that if you have time. So Chrome extensions, I just covered a little bit. And if we have questions at the end, I can talk about them a little bit more. But I want to get onto the meat of what we're doing tonight. Um, we're, we've already reviewed um, last week's session a little bit. And we're going to talk about the ISTE standards um, before we get into an overview of Google Docs, Sheets, Drive, and add-ons. And then I'd like to take a few minutes with you to brainstorm how you can use these tools instructionally in a classroom. I'm going to show you one really powerful way, um, but maybe you'll have some ideas too and can share them um, either through the microphone or through the chat when we get to the end of this webinar. And then we'll, we'll wrap things up by talking to kind of briefly reviewing what we've talked about and what next week's topic will be. So ISTE stands for the International Society for Technology and Education. That is a mouthful. Uh, we commonly refer to it as ISTE, and many people don't know that there's standards out there that, um, that are supposed to guide uh, educators in their use of technologies. Uh, there's also standards for students, and there's new standards are coming out in June for administrators, 
There's also standards for tech coaches and computer science teachers, I think, as well. And, um, and you can take a look at this in your copious spare time. Um, I really like these. these um, they're kind of high-level standards, ask, you know, asking teachers to be collaborators and learners and leaders. And then there's usually three or four indicators underneath of those categories. Um, I think tonight we're really talking about the learner, leader, and designer standards. Um, we, you're pursuing professional interests by creating and actively participating in um, this local you know, and global learning network. Um, we are, you know, we're looking at, um, as a leader, you are seeking out opportunities to collaborate and use technology in your classroom and by being here tonight. And the designer standard, you know, we're talking about um, exploring and, and applying instructional design principles um, in a digital learning environment to support learning tonight as well. So those are the standards that we're really trying to hit. And so let's get to the fun stuff. Um, we're going to play around with um, um, some samples of, uh, of, of Google Docs and Sheets. These are the links to them, and you might want to quickly write down um, what they are. The first one we're going to start with is, is the Google Sheets one. It's Tech Talk 3 Sheets. If you type in, you don't have to type in anything other than bit.ly slash Tech Talk Sheets and it will take you to um, the sheet that we're gonna play in. If you don't want, if you just wanna watch, that's totally fine, but if you wanna play along at the same time, you're more than welcome to, okay? So, um, and then we're gonna, we're gonna spend some time with sheets, we're gonna spend some time with, um, I'm sorry, we're not gonna start with sheets, we're gonna start with docs, sorry. And um, we'll go from docs to sheets to forms and then to Google Drive and, and show you how add-ons are part of each of these environments. And it's a little confusing, um, but I think you guys will, I want you guys to know that these add-ons exist and that will help you. Okay, so I'm gonna jump out of here. I think somebody is not muted. Hi, Kim, how are you? It's you that's not muted, so I'm gonna mute you. Thank you. Hi, Kim, glad to have you here tonight. So a friend of mine, Kim from Texas has joined us. So we have a, we have a multi-state party going now. Okay, so, um, so this is the document that, uh, this is not the document I created for you guys. This is the document I created for you. And, um, and we're gonna play around with some things in here. And if you want to play or watch, it's whatever is, is fine. So when you are in Drive, uh, this is Google Drive. This is where all my documents are. You can see that I've got a lot. I never delete them. I uh, I basically uh, have organized things into folders and I can search my drive to find things that I need rather than um, looking on my computer. I like having things in Google Drive so that I can access it anywhere. I don't lose it, it doesn't get deleted. Uh, Google Drive has been, is kind of the heart of Google Apps for me. And so when I make a new document, I, I click on the new button, I create docs, I could create sheets, or I could create slides. Those are the three basic things, but there's even more to it. And so what I did for you was I created a online document called in, in Google Docs and um, to, to show you some things that you may not know about Google Docs. And you'll see that I put some stuff in here and these are some notes to me, myself, to, that of things I want to show you that tonight. And then these are some samples of add-ons that you can do in Google Docs. If you wanna play around in this document right now, you can. Um, you can see that one other person is in here. Tanya's in here right now. And you can tell because she's logged in, um, you know, this icon pops up that shows her, her, her Google um, ID. Sometimes um, people are in the document and they may pop up as anonymous antelope or anonymous anteater or something. Uh, and that's when you've shared the document and made it public and they, people haven't logged in with a Google ID. So uh, I don't know what the limit is now, but you used to have, be able to have like 25 people at once in a Google Doc and everybody can edit at the same time if you want to do that. So I typically, when I'm doing workshops, I make my Google document completely public so that it's easy for people to get in. Um, to do that, I click on the share button and I am given some options. And, um, and typically I click on advanced 
you can get a link right here. You can get a link right here. You can put somebody's, uh, you know, I could share it with Kim right now, um, you know, by clicking in her name and sending it to her and adding a note to it. Uh, but I, I've made it completely public, so you can just jump right into it without having to share it. But if you just want to share with one or two people or however many people and you want to keep it somewhat private, this is the way to go. Um, but when I'm doing workshops and I want people to jump in, I click on advanced and, um, uh, and I change the settings a little bit. Um, right now it's public on the web and anyone can come here and find it and edit it. I don't think anybody's, everybody's going to, but they could if they wanted to. But I could change the link sharing on this. I can share it publicly, anyone who I've given a link to, or completely turn it off and nobody has access to it. Um, and then there are three different levels of access. So I can make it so that people can edit it, people can only leave comments, or people can just view it. So there are a lot of different settings here um, in terms of how you can share these documents. Um, I don't stress out about people messing up with my documents because there's something called revision history in Google Documents, and you can always go back and see who edited it and revert back to something. It's not a big deal to me. Maybe it is to you, but it's not a big deal to me. So I let people, you know, have access to this in general. Um, so, you know, I can give them this crazy long link, but typically um, that's really kind of long and not easy for people to uh, share. So I typically use one of those extensions I mentioned earlier called Bitly. And Bitly will let me make it, uh, will truncate the link, will make a short link for me. Um, and I can share, copy that and give it to people. And that's much more manageable for people to type that in as opposed to something crazy and long. Particularly with young kids, you need to kind of think about how you're managing some of these things. I've seen first graders use Google Docs easily. But first grade teachers have adapted to make things really kid friendly. They've either, you know, made a document link short like this, or they've provided a QR code and the kid has scanned it from an iPad, or they've done something that makes it kind of uh, friendly for, for little people. So um, I think this is, you can do so much with this, and, and we'll get into that in a minute. But the sharing piece is really, really, really important. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out to you, too, is if you ever get overwhelmed by Google Docs, there's built-in help everywhere. Um, this help over here, this GC training, this is an extension that I added to it. So you probably won't have that unless you add it. But there's built-in help over here in the right-hand corner, uh, or left-hand corner. And you click on this menu, and you can search right here. Um, short Keyboard shortcuts menus are here. Um, and you can actually go into Google's help forms and ask questions if you don't find your answer. I find that Google's um, help, Feature uh, help documentation is really good. Every tool that they have has built-in help like this. And one of the things that we really want to encourage you to do as educators is um, is to kind of develop an attitude of of self-help. If you do, if you can't figure it out, who can help you or what can help you? And for me, sometimes it's asking people on Twitter, "How do I do this? I can't figure this out. How do I insert a image into Google Docs or whatever?" Somebody on Twitter will probably help me. Or I can go to the help documentation in here, or I can go to YouTube and Google a video. So figuring out some strategies that work for you personally on how to uh, get support when you need it is really, really important. Um, especially, you know, is you know, if you're not that comfortable with technology, I think this will help you get over a hump if you if you think about how can I get the help I need and figure it out myself. Um, so help is really important. So we've talked about sharing. We've talked about here are all the people that are in here. Um, and then let's talk about these menus a little bit. So this is very similar to what you'd see probably in Microsoft Word, um, a little bit different in some ways. Under the file menu, um, you can make new things, you can make copies, you can download in different formats. So if you want this to be in Word, I often, I don't use Word. I don't have Word installed on my computer at all. Every once in a while, I need to, you know, if I'm using Google Doc, I need to send it to somebody in Word format. I can download it uh, to my computer and then, you know, email it to someone if I need to. So there are lots of different formats that you can download it in here or email it as an attachment. Um, I mentioned early, 
earlier version history. If you click on version history in the document, and feel free to do it in here, you can see who's been editing it. You can see that, uh, you know, Brittany did an edit and it will probably take me, if I clicked on here, it probably would tell me exactly what she, you know, did to the document. Um, and you can see, you know, when I created it and that sort of thing, which I created it tonight. Uh, and you can actually revert to these previous versions as well. Let me zoom out here so you can see this a little bit. Um, but you can also revert back to, you know, earlier changes if you want to and see uh, what somebody's done. What's interesting from a teaching perspective is uh, I, when I was in the classroom, it was fun to see, you know, Google Docs had just come out, you know, 10 years ago when I was working with kids. And my sixth graders, I could tell when they were working on their reports and that sort of thing because of re revision history. And I, I would log into a, you know, a, a document at night and there they would be working. And so you get a sense of how much, um, how much effort they're putting into things and how much time they're putting into it. It's pretty, it's kind of cool. So version history under the file menu um, will help you monitor that. And you can revert back to a previous copy or copy something from there or whatever you need to do. Uh, you can move this around Google Drive, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. You can publish it to the web. You can email the people that this is shared with um, to give them an update or something or, you know, leave them a comment. And you can also switch the language on here. So particularly, I think if you're working with kids um, where English is a second language, you know, this might be useful to you. Um, or if you want to, to write a letter to parents. I don't know how accurate the translations are. Uh, but just realize that you can do this in different languages. If you're uh, a foreign language teacher, maybe that's something that would be useful to you. Under the edit menu, um, there's nothing here that is probably new to you if you've used Word before. Uh, nothing exciting there, but just uh, know your keyboard shortcuts here. Command Z, Command Y for undoing and redoing. Command V for pasting. That's important. Um, under view, uh, this is a little different than what you'd see in uh, Word. There's editing mode, there's suggesting mode if you just want to leave comments, and then there's viewing mode. So the, just see, so you can see that, and you can, um, there's an equation toolbar for math people now. So if you're a math teacher, uh, you can do all sorts of things, and that is under the show equation toolbar. Under insert, this is where we get into some fun stuff. So I'm in my doc. And I can insert an image from my computer, from the web. So I could search for a picture from, uh, I'm, I picked Winston Churchill tonight to, to use as a theme. I don't know why. I was just looking for a good speech, I guess. Um, so I can um, search for him. And I can find a picture and I can drag it right into my document. Or, and there it is. Nice, giant, big picture. And I believe these are from Life, and they have their copyright friendly pictures too, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, there, so there he is. There's a picture of Winston, um, and I can do a little bit of work with that. I can make it wrap to text and things like that. So there's a picture that I got from the insert menu, and um, other things I can insert are charts, drawings, special characters, equations, um, you know, breaks, that sort of thing that you might see in Word. What's really cool here is drawing. And teachers are, are really creative with this. Um, you can actually do mind maps with this or, uh, you know, create drawings on your own within a Google Doc. And, uh, you know, do all sorts of cool things with it. I'm going to mute you. Um, and then you can save it and, and put it into your document and manipulate it however you want to. So there's drawings in here, which is a little bit different than, uh, it's similar to kind of the clip art you'd see in, in, in Word, but it's a little bit different. So that's under the insert menu. What else do you need to know here? Charts. Um, you can pull right from sheets. Lots of cool things. Now, the commenting piece is what I think is really powerful with, with kids and, um, um, and, and peer editing. I would use Google Docs with students to have them review each other's work or work on a report together. And if you highlight text and you click on comments, um, this is a comment. I'm going to write this is a comment. And um, 
you'll see that it'll pop up here to the side and you could actually reply to this if feel free to if you want to um, like I could make a suggestion here like why don't you use all capitals or whatever it is and uh, and then somebody could fix it and market is resolved so this is kind of like the the tracking tool in, in word um, and you can make suggestions without marring somebody's writing and that sort of thing so I'm gonna click on resolve and it goes away so that's the insert menu um, feel free to play around with this in this doc if you want to while we're talking formatting is pretty is pretty uh, clear-cut if you do click on a picture uh, you'll see that different tools will come up though be aware of that uh, if you click on text the toolbar looks one way if you click on a picture you have some image options you can crop things you can um, you can I think you can change the color of things so I could make um, I could make uh, Winston purple here that's kind of cool isn't it um, and I can replace the image from all these different places if I wanted to so lots of cool things you can do uh, two pictures if you click on them but if you click on text your menu is going to be a little bit different so that's that's pretty basic um, the other thing that I find really useful under formatting is, and it also is in the toolbar, is sometimes I paste things in here and it doesn't match the text that I, that's in the document. If you go to clear formatting, it will remove um, whatever format you brought it in with and revert it to the format that's in the document. Uh, this tool on the right hand side, the T with the slash through it in the toolbar, that does the same thing. So I use that quite a bit um, when I want my format to look kind of consistent. Then um, this is where we get to the fun stuff under tools. There's spelling, there's word count. So I can, I can highlight this text and click on um, word count and it will tell me how many words and characters are in there. I use that all the time. There's review suggested edits. I've never seen that before, that's new. I think lots of new tools will pop up within this and they don't make a big announcement about it. It just is there one day and you're like, Ooh, that's exciting. Um, there's also, um, explore and this is kind of fun. So you can highlight some text and then, um, they'll bring up some kind of research related things here that you can go check out. Um, you know, and sometimes you can actually, let me see if I can move this here. Sometimes you used to be able to cite it too and put it right into the document, but I don't know if they do that anymore. Uh, but there's some, anyway, there's some resources here that are related to what I, I you know, whatever I just did. Um, so you could type in something like uh, Arizona and it'll bring up resources like this. I wish it used to, it used to have this great thing that was a citation thing and it would, it would cite, oh here, maybe this is it. No, that's not it. Um, images and then it will also search my drive Ooh, anything that's Arizona related that's in my Google Drive will pop up how cool is that so that's the explore feature there's a dictionary so if I don't know what silence means I can highlight it go to tools and a dictionary will pop up and there's also something called notepad or keep Sorry, and so you can take um, notes in Keep. Uh, and so if I wanted to take, you know, highlight this, click on the tools, Keep Notepad, does it take it automatically? No. Nope. Um, I think I could just take a note next to this, I guess. Blah, 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 blah. But I could have running notes in my, in my Google Keep. These are from other things that I've done. Um, and pictures too. This is kind of like a little kind of like a little notepad that's built into a lot of Google tools that you can reference uh, You can do lists it looks like um, And then this is what Google keep the main Google keep looks like you can go to the main part of that And you can organize your notes and things so that's keep.google.com But it's built into your Google Doc if you want to do this now for kids who are working on reports and uh, you want them to learn how to cite their resources and that sort of thing 
this Google Keep might be a good place for them to keep track of the links and places where they're, they're, they're harvesting images or they're getting their research um, from and that sort of thing. So that might be a tool that you would use in that regard. All you have to do to close it is click on the X. I'm going to close out some of those things there. Um, and then voice typing. This is like the coolest thing since sliced bread. So um, you click on tools. You click on, uh, boy, I need to plug in my computer before the battery goes down. I thought it was plugged in. Uh, you click on voice typing, and you can just dictate. So I'm going to click here to speak. I'm going to allow Google Docs to use my microphone. Hello, my name is Lucy Gray, and I am giving a lecture on Winston Churchill to uh, teachers in Arizona. Period. And it, it basically uh, it did pretty. It, it took it pretty care. It took it pretty well. Now, how I would use this is with students who have difficulty typing or who um, have trouble forming ideas. Maybe they want to dictate a story first uh, just to get something out there and then they go back and they edit it by hand. Um, I have a son who has dysgraphia, which is, it, you know, makes it difficult to write and not comfortable to write. And I've always encouraged him to do this. He, of course, he doesn't listen to me. He's 15. But this is something that if you, if you just want to get a rough draft down and going, maybe you use this voice tool um, to do that. So that's built in under tools. There's also um, a translation tool as well, which I think is pretty handy. So I highlight text. Trans oh, it's, you know what it's going to do? It's, it's not um, highlighting the text. It's going to translate the whole document, and it makes a copy of it. So I can change it into um, Esperanto, Hawaiian, you know, every, anything that you can think of. Um, they used to have things that you could translate into funny things like Elmer Fudd, and I don't think they, I don't think they have that anymore. <laughs> so let's say what, I want to translate this into Spanish. I click on translate, and it makes another Google Doc with that content um, in Spanish for me. Pretty nifty, huh? Now, again, I don't know how um, accurate it is, but... Um, you know, it's, at least it's a start, and if you're trying to communicate with parents who may not speak English or something, this might be better than nothing, okay? So that's what I would suggest that um, you use this for. So let me close that tab for a second and go back to my original one. And um, so I can see that somebody drew something on here, and they must have taken, they take this tool? Who drew the blue line? I'm curious. What tool did you use? I'm not. I'm not picking on anybody. I just was curious. Somebody drew a blue line. It looks like it might. That's a highlight color in the bar up here. I drew the blue line with. This is Kim. I drew Hi, Kim. the blue line with the the pen tool, thinking here? that was um, the chat tool. Ah. The chat for the oh, so, Zoom oh, so, oh, so you're using it in Zoom. So that's not that you're using in the you're using it in Zoom, not in the doc. Okay, I got it. Okay, thank you, Kim. I was like, yeah. That's cool. Okay, got it. All right. So we've got tools here, um, and there's also preferences here. It, you know, this is you know I don't know how exciting this is for you, but uh, if you if there's something that you have a preference for, you can look at that. I don't think that's that exciting personally. Um, now this is what gets me going, and so this is what I want to play around with now, and um, and we'll do the same in sheets. I'm not, I'm not as much of an expert in sheets, but we'll we'll touch on what you can do with it. Um, so add-ons are these third-party per tools um, that you can add on to slides, docs, forms, sheets, and Google Drive. They are not Google extensions, but they they're easily confused with them. Google extensions go with your Chrome browser. Uh, Add-ons are unique and different for slides, docs, sheets, and, and Drive. So you're going to find different ones for those different tools. Um, if you go to add-ons, you can see that I've installed 5 million of them. You probably have not installed so many. Um, and at the bottom, of your screen, you're going to see, you might see something um, 
it's probably further up for you that says get add-ons. And this is the store, I guess, I think that's what they call it for add-ons. And there are all these things that you can do to make, um, to make your Google uh, doc come to life. There are things for clip art, um, there's things for labels, there's calculators, there's all sorts of cool things. And so um, in the slides for the presentation tonight, I've listed some of my favorite ones. If you wanna add your favorite ones there, you're more than welcome to. Um, but there are a lot here that you might find useful. Um, you can sort these by category and there is an education category of things that might be particularly, they're kind of designed for education. So Lucy, the, do you yeah. find that it slows your browsers down? No, I don't. But you know what? I always have 5 million tabs on and, and my fan on my computer is always going, it seems like. So maybe it is That's true. taking up more, more, um, more RAM or something. But no, I don't find that it, slow, that it slows them down. You can take them off you, okay. if you don't like them. One of the things, so what have, so let's say you want to put one on your, in your Google Docs. It, once you install it, it will be available for all your Google Docs, by the way. You don't have to do this with every single doc that you create. So let's say I want, um, let's find one that I don't have. Um, uh, what looks like it might be interesting. Um, let's try Doc Chat. So you click on the blue line that says free, and it's gonna ask permission for your Google account. And if, if Google hasn't approved it, it's gonna give you some message like, it's not approved, do you wanna go back? I usually ignore that and I keep going. Um, I, it's, it's, but you, if you're concerned about privacy and that sort of thing, you may wanna be careful about this sort of thing. I don't think it's an issue. This one doesn't have that. This looks like it's been approved and everything. So I have to allow it to work with my um, Google Docs settings. And then it's going to appear in this add-ons menu. And that was called Doc Chat. And I have no idea what it does. So we'll, we'll find out now. Um, click on Start. And I think this is going to make a chat window so that we could chat in here. I'm going to sign into my Google account. Again, and I have to pick a username of oh, six characters. And complete. Okay, so I've got my account. Now I can make a group chat with this in the document. Oh. I don't know really why I would want to do this, uh, but we have a group here, okay? And then I can click on here to add users. Oh, so I would bring somebody in. So if I wanted Kim to come in here, I would put her email in and address, and, and they would invite her to it. I don't really, that doesn't seem that exciting to me. And I guess, but you can message them and then work on the document together. There is built-in chat already with this, I thought. So I don't know. I don't know if that one is that particularly exciting. But let me show you the ones that I've been playing with, and maybe you'll like these better. Um, so this word cloud one, what I did was um, I found uh, you know part of a Winston Churchill uh, speech, and under add-ons I went to um, I, the one that I installed was word cloud generator, and. Uh, I think I might have to, um, I have to highlight the text first, maybe. Let's see. So here it is. Let me try it again. So highlight the text, go to that word cloud generator. And it makes a word cloud out of um, the text there. Now, how I would use this, if I were a history and English teacher, I would get a longer speech and see what words stuck out and were prominent and what that means uh, about that orator's use of language, for instance. And you can download the, I couldn't find a way to bring the photo from this, in, you know, dragging and dropping into my doc, but I can download it and then put it and then upload it um, to this document. And that's what I did here. And here's my, here's my word cloud 
that I did. So you could use this in your classroom to kind of analyze text and do sorts, so all sorts of interesting things with that. So um, Lucy, it's Kim, yeah. not the other Kim. Um, <laughs> Hi, Kim Toby. So can you, so you always have to have the words within the document before you can use the word cloud? Yeah, I okay. think so. You can't um, just go to word cloud and start typing. Uh, there are, I mean, there are other tools out there that are on the web where you could do your own word, word cloud and, and paste text into. You know, there are lots of different generators out mm -hmm. here. This is one that would be, you know, if you have text in a document, let's say your kids wrote, like, let's say even your, like your, your students here in this program wrote a paper for you in a Google Doc and shared it with you. You could ask them to create a, a word cloud as a graphic to go with it. And it would be really interesting to see what words were, were you know, the, the, the bigger the word, uh, if a word is large in the word cloud, it's been mentioned a lot in the text, right? So it'd be kind of interesting to see how things popped up in one of your students' papers. You know, I guess that's probably the, the way that I would use it. Great. Um, that's helpful. Are, Thank you. Yeah. There are other, if you type in word cloud uh, tools um, and you don't want to use it within, um, this is the one that I used to use all the time was Wordle. I love Wordle. So this is not one that's in Google Docs. Uh, it, it's on an add-on. But you would, you know, you could create your own. I totally forgot about Wordle. But you could take your text and paste it in here. Um, and you can customize it a little bit differently. So let's say I take, uh, let's see, let's say I take like the text from this article. I select it. Uh, Command C to copy it. Go to Wordle, paste it in there. And it should generate a picture but it's not but you get the drift it will it should do it I'm not gonna waste uh, too much time on that but um because I want to make sure that I, I get to sheets a little bit um, so anyway that's these are add-ons here and I would encourage you to play around with them um, this one I used I don't know if that was the world tool and I have to think about it. It, it it measured the frequency of how much these words popped up I think that was an advanced feature in that word cloud generator um, another tool that I was playing around with, if anybody's a music fan, uh, this one was called VexTab Music Notation. And I'm not a music person at all. But I think it's fascinating how people have developed these add-ons so that um, docs can be used in, in music class, for instance. So you can, you can go in here and, and do things with this and make your, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly how to do it because I'm not a music person. But you could use Google Docs and create your own uh, sheet music um, with one of these add-ons. There are um, bibliography creators, uh, there's math tools, there's a rubric creator that people like. Um, I like Pixabay for free images uh, on the web and, and here. So if your students are looking for images that are copyright friendly to go in a report or something, you can type in, you know, flower and pictures will pop up. And you can drag it right into your document. Theoretically. And which add-on was that? This is Pixabay. Oh, Pixabay. Okay. And it's great on the web. There it goes. It's finally going in there. So there's my picture of my lilacs. And I can do more fun things to it. Um, like I could change it to green or whatever. Um, another add-on, you know, and you can also get rid of these too. The other one I thought might be useful to teachers, and this is also, this is the same one as available in Sheets, is templates, browse templates. And these are different templates. There's even a section for students and teachers for homework planners, uh, for schedules, for calendars, um, all sorts of kind of cool things here for teachers. And what this does is it will open up in a, um, in a, in a it will copy the, a copy of this lesson plan template to your Google Drive. This is not a Google Doc. It's actually a spreadsheet. But the, the add-on, for some reason, is in Docs. I guess it's just to give you access to it. So if you click on that, it makes a copy, puts it in your Google Drive, and then you can customize it and add on to it as much as you want to. So I think that one is particularly useful to teachers. So this should be 
Um, it doesn't open up another tab. You have to click on open file. And there's a template that I can use and customize for myself, and it's in my Google Drive. I thought that was kind of cool. So play around with these add-ons. If, you know, if you're comfortable with Google Docs, um, this might be new to you. There's 5 million things you can do. You could also get rid of them. There's a tab that should, down here, you can't see it because my toolbar's in the way, that says manage add-ons. And you can go there and remove them if you don't want them there anymore. Uh, but what you install is going to be available in any Google Doc that you open. Now, in Google Sheets, it, it looks a little bit different. And I'm going to reload this so you can see what it does. Um, I highly recommend that people take a, a spreadsheet class somewhere in general because sh spreadsheets are really powerful. And I'm, I'm, I have about five minutes to tell you about them. And, and that's not enough time to tell you about the power of spreadsheets. Um, there are a lot of fancy things that you can do with formulas and, and make multi-tab spreadsheets and all sorts of cool things. It's worth the investment of taking a, a course or something just on spreadsheets. But in a nutshell, um, what Google Sheets is great for is that if you're working on a project together where you have to share data, this makes it easy to do instead of sending a, a spreadsheet back and forth and editing it and losing track of the copies and that sort of thing. It has the same kind of features that you'd see in Google Docs, like version history, um, and, sh and the sharing works the same way. Uh, I don't think there's anything here. You can put charts, images, functions. This is new. Um, you can put in checkboxes. Um, so that people got very excited about that. You can leave sticky notes for people. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty standard. Um, what you would see with other tools. You can also put macros in. Don't ask me what that means. I think it's recording functions. Um, but here's what I really want to tell you is that there's there's also add-ons and spreadsheets. And there's some that have been, um, here's a template, one that I was talking about earlier. Um, you can do mail merges. I love yet another mail merge. I use that all the time to write personal, you know, personalized letters to people. Um, this one, which you'll see embedded here is um, Flippity, which turns your contents of a spreadsheet into flashcards. So I just, I downloaded one here and, and it put the content into the spreadsheet. And I have to publish this to the web. I just played around with this today, so bear with me. Oh, I know what I have to do. So I have to go here to publish. Okay, so I published it. And then I go back to Flippity. Let's see what happens. So you give this link to people and it's gonna lead, it's gonna, oh, it's having trouble loading the spreadsheet. It wasn't published. But what's gonna happen is um, publish to the web, entire document, Okay, I did. I I did publish it. Flippity, flippity, flip, flip, flip. Um. So what's supposed to happen is maybe it's not working, because these are third-party things. Uh, sometimes they're a little funky. So I did that. Click on that. Let's see if it gives it to me this time. Maybe I need to refresh it. Anyway, I'm not going to waste time with this. But that's theoretically, it's supposed to give you um, give you um flashcards. Uh, Doctopus will let you, it's kind of obsolete in some ways. This is this add-on was, was developed by an educator that allowed you to distribute multiple copies of a Google's doc or spreadsheet to your, um, to your students. And Google Classroom does that now. Um, there's one that makes mapping. Uh, if you have data in a spreadsheet, you can create maps from it. Um, there's an online ru rubric. There's all sorts of cool things here that you can play with. Um, if you go to the Get Add-on store, uh, at the bottom there, you're going to see that they're different than the ones that were in, um, in the one for Docs. Fluberoo is one that teachers have also loved, by the way, if you want to play with that. But you don't really need that in, Google, in Google's Classroom anymore. I mean, Google Classroom kind of does that. Plus, Google Forms also has something that's very similar. 
Um, this one down here, people love random generator. This is for like random passwords or, um, you know, picking names, things like that. People use that one. You just click on free. Uh, you allow it and it, you can install it and do all sorts of things with it. What I want to cover too before we wrap up in the next five minutes too is there's another feature to, to Sheets that teachers use all the time. And maybe you used it. Let me look in the comments. Have you guys used Google Forms at all? Anybody use them? Okay. So Google Forms has add-ons too. I know. Isn't Forms like the best thing since sliced bread? So you can take a spreadsheet and you can make it um, a form from, you can, from, from your data, or you can go to Drive and just create a form from your, it's usually purple, from, from here. And uh, so I use this for surveys. We, we used it for the survey for this course or for this webinar series. Um, I'm running an event right now where people submit their content for this event through a Google form. Um, just so you know really quickly, it sounds like you guys have played with this before, but there's, you can change the colors and customize it. You can share it the same way you would with Google Docs. Uh, you know, it's pretty basic in terms of what you can do look-wise. But um, under the gear symbol in Google Forms, you can make quizzes. So I would highly encourage you to, to, to experiment with this. This takes the place of that Fluberoo add-on that used to be so popular in Google Sheets with teachers um, because you can do it right here and it's a little bit, it's not as clunky. Um, so you can create a quiz right in Google Forms if you go to your settings. The other thing too is there's a puzzle piece up here. Those are add-ons for uh, Google Forms and now I'm trying to think how these are the ones that I have installed and, the, and these are just amazing but I'm trying to think how did I install them um, it might be down here yep they are so it's a little bit different than you, what you see in sheets and you see in docs um, you click on uh, the three dots here and go to add-on, add-ons, and you're gonna see that there are different things here that are completely different than the ones that we saw in Sheets and Docs. The one that I use mostly is, I use confirmation emails, like to send somebody, if like I want them to, to know that I received it, they get a confirmation. Um, there's another one too that allows you to send a copy of whatever somebody submitted back to them as well, automatically. So there are a lot of really sophisticated things you can do with the add-ons in here. Um, and, and we could spend like a whole, a whole webinar just playing around with these. But I just want, so anyway, the, the result of today is I really want you to experiment with these um, and play around with them and, and, and dive into them and be, just be aware that these things exist. And, you know, the final thing, and we can talk about this at the, at the beginning of next webinar, I'll, I can review this a little bit. In your Google Drive, um, I highly recommend that you make some folders and start organizing stuff. Uh, it will it'll make your life a lot easier. That's one tip. But under new and more in Google Drive, you're going to see that there's that same store um, that allows you to put add-ons just for Drive. And these are awesome, and you'll, I know you'll really, really, really love these. For instance, one is Powtoon, which you can go to the website Powtoon and make a cartoon video. Uh, lots of teachers really like that. Um, or you can do it right in your drive and save it into your drive. That's why it's an add-on for drive. Or Simple Booklet for making booklets. Or UJam, which is kind of like GarageBand. Um, one of my favorite ones is, is Video Notes. And what this does, um, just to show you, is you can put in, I think this is really good for high school students, particularly in a flipped learning situation where they're watching videos and, and then, you know, it's homework or something. You put in um, a URL to a video from YouTube and it will be here for the students and then they watch it and they take notes. And I believe the notes are synced to the time 
sequence in the video as well. So just to show you what this looks like um, really quickly. Um, let me find something interesting. So here's that, that Edutopia video um, there. So I'm going to grab the link to this, this video and copy it. Go back to my video notes uh, document, paste it in there. And hopefully it will start playing. Come on, show a video. Um, and I can take notes while the video is going. It's probably not going because my computer is tired and the internet, obviously, it's probably not working very well for me right now or else it should be loading. But anyway, you can watch the video, take the notes, and it timestamps it. And you can save this right to your Google Drive. And I believe you can, sh you can do this with multiple people. So you could have a group of students watching the same video and taking collaborative notes together with this. So add-ons are, just to review, are, are third-party things. They're not extensions that, um, that third-party developers have done, and they're there for you. Um, I highly recommend that you take a look at, for instructional uses of this, at, there's a trend called hyperdocs, and I'm not an expert by, the, by any means by this, but three California teachers have kind of developed this concept of creating, um, and, and there are lots of examples here, and you can actually go and copy their examples of documents that have everything students need for an assignment, multimedia. Uh, they've taken advantage of some of these add-ons and that sort of thing, but these are, they're not worksheets but they're kind of guides to learning is how I would, I would describe them. This has been a big trend in ed tech. It's a great way to organize your materials for students and give them everything that they need in kind of an interactive and personal way. In our materials for this week, there's a really good article by one of my favorite bloggers named Jennifer Gonzalez. Um, she writes for Ked uh, Cult of Pedagogy, uh, where she did an interview with these three hyper, hyper doc people um, about them, and it's an excellent, excellent article. So I highly recommend that you take a look at it. Um, I've also put a video in here. You can put you can put YouTube videos into a Google Doc. This video tutorial will show you how to do that. Um, and then this is a tutorial for you on quizzes in Google Forms. If you want to try some of the add-ons that I've talked about, these are a few. Feel free to edit these slides and add a few more that you like. Um, and if you want to post some add-ons in our Google Classroom this week as homework, you're more than happy to do that. Um, it's time for us to go. I don't have to go anywhere, but you may have to go somewhere. If you have any questions, just stick around, and I'd be happy to chat with you. If you have to bug out of here, that's totally fine, too. Um, but all of our materials will be in our Google Classroom, and here are the directions on how to get in there. So I'm going to stop talking for a second. Are there any questions? Does anybody want to grab the chat or grab a mic and, and ask questions about things? Yeah. <clears throat> Lucy, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you, you know how in, in, in just regular Word you can um, create a hyperlink? Yes. Is that, can you do that in Google Docs? Yeah, absolutely. that's a really good question. You can do it in all the Google stuff. and. Um, so let's say I'm in here, and you, did, you know what? That didn't look, it didn't pop up in those menus when we were looking at it, did it? Uh-uh. So let's say, um, I have too many little things popping up here. Um, so let's say I want to type in um, Edutopia, right? And this is actually, this will save you some time in some, in some instances. Um, so you highlight the text. And in the toolbar above here, it says insert link. And what it does, it, it, it acts kind of a smart way. It knows that you're looking for Edutopia because you highlighted that text and it finds it for you and you just do that. You don't even have to type in the URL. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Can you so, hyperlink to just documents that you've yeah, created? Yeah, you can, hi to, you, can hi you, can, you can hyperlink to anything. So I could hyperlink to the spreadsheet I just created. Um, so let's say, you know, my uh, spreadsheet, let me, I'm going to type in just something like that, generic, right? Highlight the text. So that's what hyperdocs, I think hyperdocs do that. They, hyper, they, they hyperlink to a lot of different things. So then I can search for uh, 
you know, uh, tech talk. And it's going to search my drive, I believe. Um, so there's, so there's my, so there's a, it's a, this is my planning doc. It's not coming up with the spreadsheet one. Let's see if it's, anyway, I, I'll, so I'll just link to one of these. So this is a document that I'm in right now. This one up here that says educators rising is my planning document. So I can click apply and that will take you, you probably won't have access to it, but it will, it will take you to, um, to a doc that's in my drive. So when you when you search for something like this, it it will it will look in your drive and it will look on the web. Is that interesting? So the doc it, the doc that you're hyperlinking to must be in your drive. Yeah, it, it but, couldn't be somewhere but, else. But no, it could. So oh, okay. The, the the easier way. So let's say one. I let's say it wasn't working for me to get to that spreadsheet. It wasn't showing up. Right. I can go here, grab the link here i can copy it right i uh -huh. can go back to my here and I, i'm going to get rid of this i'm going to remove that link and i can highlight it click on the hyperlink and paste in that that link that i copied from the spreadsheet and apply so when i click on this now it takes me to the spreadsheet so anything um now oh, if, okay. I, if i didn't make that spreadsheet public uh and I gave it to, and I shared it with somebody who didn't have access to it, they would have to request access to that document. It's, it's a frequent thing for people to, to forget to, to change the sharing settings when they're sharing it with people. So you mm, may okay. share a document and people, so you just have, you just have to get used to the concept of sharing um, and, and, and your permission, you know, thinking about the permissions and who needs to have what I, I find, uh, I don't use any any documents unless I have to um, on my computer. Really, I use Pages somewhat sometimes too. I, I do, but but everything I own is is in Docs because I can find it and, and and I can search for it too. Like if I can't remember the name of a document, I can go to my drive and I can search for it and find it pretty easily. Um, I don't get rid of email and I don't get rid of documents. Everything's just here. You know, I, I don't need to I don't need to clean it out. If that makes sense, it's a, it's a different way of working and, and getting used to things. You, you don't have to be as extreme as me, but um, the other thing to keep in mind too is you can also upload existing documents uh, to Google Drive and you can convert them. Like, so if you upload a Word document, you can convert it to a Google Doc. It may, you may lose some of your formatting, um, but you can do it. And it, it works pretty well. And same with spreadsheets and that sort of thing. Um, you can upload things just for storage. Like you can upload a bunch of pictures and store it in your Google Drive too. Um, it's, you know, Google Drive is, is your new hard drive, but in the cloud. Does that help, Beth? Anybody else have any questions or not clear on anything that I could show you really quickly? I'm happy to stick around. Okay, so you guys are quiet. So if you um, so if you go to our classroom, uh, same time, same place next week. And next week, I can't remember what we're talking about, but um, you know, you can go in here, and all the information from today and more is in there. Next week, we are talking about curating digital resources. How do we organize things? How do we do that? And we can talk a little bit more about Drive as part of that if you want. I think that might be helpful. Thanks, everyone, for coming. I'm glad we had uh, a nice crowd tonight. Thanks, Kim Case, for coming, too. It's always nice to have uh, friends from outside come into these things. Um, and so next Wednesday, I'll see everybody at the same time and we'll talk about how to get organized and save all these digital resources that we're discovering. Uh, thanks for coming everyone and, uh, have a good night. Thank you so much, Lucy. Thank you.